my name is Mark. Last year, I posted a video up on YouTube of a little incident I had at the Nut Tree Airport in California. Originally, I posted the video because I wanted my mechanic to see it, and the file was just way too large to try to email to him. So that's why I put it up. Since then, I have been amazed about how many views it actually got, and I've gotten a ton of questions and comments and instead of trying to answer them all by typing them in, I figured I'd just make a short video and try to cover as many of them as I could. So to start this off, I, I figured I should maybe talk a little bit about my flying experience and then my airplane, or 27 Charlie Tango. I do have a commercial pilot's license, but it is a helicopter license. I picked up my private airplane back in 1979 at Biggs Army Airfield, where I was stationed. It's uh, at Fort Bliss, Texas. I almost immediately went straight to helicopters and got my commercial license. I worked as a CFI for a number of years. I did some line work and then I joined the San Francisco Fire Department and then basically just didn't fly for another 30 years. Once I retired, I decided to buy myself a little retirement present because I always wanted to get back into flying again and I bought the uh, 427 Charlie Tango. Now the airplane itself, it is a uh, flight design CTSW, it's a 2007. It has a Rotax engine, a 912 ULS. At the time of this incident, I had about 70 hours in it. And basically what happened, I had flown my cousin up to Nut Tree to have breakfast. So this was the second flight of the day. Uh, as we taxied out, I stopped in the run-up area. I did the complete run-up check. Just like I always do, everything on the checklist went fine. I proceeded onto the runway and started to take off, and as I started to climb out, uh, that red light that a lot of you had noticed came on, and that was a light showing uh, low fuel pressure. Now, I had experienced that a couple of times before, and what I had learned is that the road tax can, at times, sorry about that, will give you a low fuel pressure light, uh, indication on, on a climb out but it immediately goes away. And it, the times I had experienced it, that's exactly what it did. But on this particular day, it did not. Uh, as I started to climb out, the, I started to lose power. I felt a big shudder in the engine. I immediately pushed the nose forward to make sure I could uh, you know, maintain my airspeed. I pulled the throttle back a little bit. The engine started to come back around. I should start off by saying, at all times, I had plenty of places to land. There's several, a lot of open fields around there, several roads, it was always safe. But my thought was, as the engine is still running, keep flying. And so I tried to bring the power back, start to climb a little bit, start to go into a pattern. I figured I'd try to, as long as the airport, as the airplane was running, I was gonna keep it going. Just like we always did in the fire department, as long as you have resources that are still operable, use them to uh, improve your advantage until they don't work. And that's what I exactly to do at, at this point too. I was gonna keep climbing, uh, get back to the airport and try to do as close to a normal landing as possible. So I pull up, I started moving in the pattern. As I got everything stabilized, then it occurred to me I do need to communicate. And that's when I made the radio call to the traffic at Nut Tree saying that I was coming back to the airport. Now, several people said I should have called a Bay Day. And even thinking back on that right now, it's probably true and I probably should have done it. I didn't do it at the time. I really didn't consider it that much of an emergency. I knew that I could get back around and land it. And I just didn't call May Day. Hindsight, I probably should have, but one of those lessons learned. So I get myself in the downwind several times along the way. It shuddered again, started to lose power. I did the same thing. I stopped climbing. I pulled the power back till it got back. Once I was able to uh, get just back to the end of the runway, I started to turn base. That time I did realize that I was uh, kind of tight to the airport and I was high. Uh, so I started thinking, okay, what do I need to do, do to get down? Now, I did consider doing a slip, which a lot of people said I should have just gone into a slip and came down. But my choice was either slip or dump all the flaps. I felt more comfortable going full flaps. I knew that it was going to work. I knew that I'd be able to make it. I knew I could slow myself down and be able to land normally. I figured with a slip, I might end up coming in a little too fast. And these CTs will float forever if you're going too fast, trying to touch down. 
and I didn't want to run out of runway because I pretty sure I didn't have an opportunity to do a go around. So I chose to do the uh, full flaps and I went and landed the airplane. Uh, everything went fine, landed, pulled off of the runway, uh, went to the uh, terminal and parked. We took Uber back home, I made contact with my mechanic, and the next day we went back out to the airport to take a look at the airplane. He came out, we went through everything, we, we ran it up, everything seemed normal. We kind of figured it's just probably just, I got a hold of some bad gas. Uh, I should back up and say the Rotax recommends you using car gas or mo gas, but you can use 100 low lead. Uh, at that time I had been using uh, car gas. Well, we drained some of it off, we put uh, some 100 low lead in, fired up fine, flew around a few times, everything went fine, I flew it back home. Once we did get back home and the mechanic come out and take a closer look at it, we did go through, changed the fuel pump, we checked all the filters and everything, the airplane ran fine. I decided since then to exclusively use 100 low lead. And I know that a lot of people don't do that with this particular engine because of the lead buildup in the engine. But what I've decided to do was just go through and just change the oil every 25 hours. We go through completely clean everything out, uh, check to see what the buildup is. When I do put the 100 low lead in, I use Decalin uh, to cut down on the uh, lead buildup. Also, I change the spark plugs every 50 hours. I have not had a single problem with the airplane since then. I never get a low fuel pressure indicator indication again, and I feel much more comfortable flying it that way. Uh, there are people who tell me that I should have just, uh, once I've taken off, just to go and straight ahead and just immediately land or try to do the impossible turn. And so there's a lot of schools of thought, but again, like I was saying is the airplane was running. I just felt like I could get back, and if I did lose the engine, somewhere in that pattern at least i was a lot higher than i was before i then had the opportunity to easier opportunity to get back to the to the runway or at least i had the altitude so i could pull the parachute on if i needed it so that was my pro thought process that's what i went through i hope this answers everybody's questions if you have anything else uh feel free just to put it in the comments and i'll answer where i can I, like I said, I've gotten a lot of uh, comments, some good, some that are criticism, some criticism that I do believe I deserve, but this is one of these learning lessons and hopefully other people learn from this. So with that said, uh, thank you for watching and you guys take care and fly safe.